The marketing campaign for Assassin's Creed Shadows has resumed after the delay, bringing us some brand new details about the game's stealth gameplay and fresh gameplay footage. This video will quickly go over why the stealth gameplay in Assassin's Creed Shadows is going to be different from what we've seen in the AC RPGs before, so let's get started. The first thing to notice is how much better these new clips look compared to the old ones. I really like how fast and aggressive the stealth looks. Shadows has made some major changes to its gameplay, starting with the fact that there's no companion eagle to scout ahead or map out an entire location for us. To make up for that, both Naoi and Yasuke have access to the new Observe mechanic. This feature helps us quickly see additional details on the screen, like tagging targets, tracking enemies, or finding loot, collectibles, and quest items. If we're standing on a sync point, we can also use it to closely examine the area around us. Naoi also has Eagle Vision, the classic AC ability. This allows us to spot enemies hiding behind walls and notice important sounds. While Observe and Eagle Vision function separately, they can also work together. Combining the two lets us reveal, tag, and monitor enemies through walls, which is especially useful to avoid accidentally walking into a room full of hostile samurai. For the first time in Assassin's Creed, a hiding in shadows will actually make us invisible to enemies. At night, any dark area can be used as a hiding spot, allowing us to move through without being seen. This works both indoors and outdoors, so we'll need to pay attention to our surroundings to find places to hide, or even create our own by breaking lanterns with a shuriken. During the day, Naoi is a skilled and powerful shinobi, but at night, the darkness gives her a major edge over enemies, especially on higher difficulty settings. This light and shadow system has so much potential, we don't yet know how much we'll be able to do with it, but I'm really looking forward to trying it out. Playing with this system is going to be so much fun, and when it's dark, it's truly dark. In one clip, Naoi walks through a hallway, and we can barely see anything except for faint light softly shining here and there. It's super atmospheric, and I'm loving how it looks. While Naoi moves quickly, sprinting while staying stealthy is risky. It makes noise, and guards can hear her footsteps and notice us immediately. Standing up also makes us easier to notice, so crouching is really important here. When Naoi crouches, she moves slower, but her footsteps are much quieter. This is super helpful indoors, where crouching prevents making noise on nightingale floors, special floors that creak when stepped on, or bumping into objects that make sound. One cool detail I noticed is the ripple effect around Naoi's footsteps, which shows how much noise she's making. It's a new addition that wasn't included in earlier gameplay footage. Naoi and Yasuke are the first characters in the series who can go prone. Going prone makes it harder for enemies to spot us whether we're on the ground, on rooftops, or underwater. For Naoi, going prone also unlocks special moves. By pressing the dodge button while prone, we can roll in any direction, sideways, forward, or backward. This is great for quickly avoiding guards when they get too close. In the game, we might find hidden spaces under buildings to crawl through. And this prone assassination? It's so quick! I love how smooth it looks! Oh, and Yasuke can go prone too. I'm really curious to see how he does it all in that heavy armor. Naoi has four main tools for stealth. First, there's the smoke bomb, which creates a cloud to help us escape or take down weaker enemies without being seen. Next are shinobi bells, which are great for distracting guards. Throwing a bell can lure guards away from their post or give us a chance to sneak by. Then there are kunai, sharp throwing knives that deal a lot of damage and can even result in one-hit kills when aimed right. Finally, shuriken are star-shaped weapons that stun enemies or create distractions by hitting objects in the environment. Before we move on, I have a small favor to ask. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It really helps the channel grow because YouTube loves small actions like this. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it. And if you already have, don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an upload. With shadows coming soon, I'll be posting a lot more content, so hit the bell to stay updated. Now, let's continue. Naoi is the smallest assassin we've seen, and she uses that to her advantage. She can slip through small cracks in walls and hide inside tiny spaces like boxes to ambush enemies. And if you love double assassinations, you'll be happy to know they're back in shadows. If we equip the Tonto and unlock the special skill, we can eliminate two enemies standing close together in one move, whether on the ground or from above. Another new feature is the grab mechanic. While undetected, we can grab and drag enemies to take them down or knock them out silently. This gives us more control. For example, when hiding in a bush, we now have to manually grab an enemy, pull them in, and then take them out. This is different from before, when the game did it automatically. It's a nice change that puts more control in our hands. 
I'm also hoping parkour and shadows will feel a bit less automated, though that might not happen. Still, I'd love to see it. There are other stealth features too, like dropping stalactites in winter to distract guards, or performing quick assassinations through shoji doors. The game also adds servants, a new type of non-lethal enemy. They can't fight, but can call guards if they spot us. Their ability to raise alarms and bring reinforcements makes them as dangerous as regular enemies. Servants follow their own patrol routes, so we'll need to keep track of where they are. Using Eagle Vision will highlight them in orange. Another change is how places like castles and fortresses are designed. They're split into smaller areas, with each area functioning as its own space. If we're spotted in one, we can recover and keep sneaking around without the entire fortress chasing us. This is different from older games, where being seen would put the entire area on high alert. If we do get detected but manage to disappear again, enemies will search in pairs, with one keeping watch and the other looking for us. They'll stay on high alert for longer, so using tricks like whistling to lure them in will only make them more suspicious. This could make it harder to get a stealth kill from hiding if we're not careful. Some enemy types and shadows behave in unique ways. For example, samurai can't be assassinated if they're caught in a smoke bomb. In one clip, we can see that they don't stay in the smoke like others. Instead, they quickly leave the area. This is different from Ashigaru soldiers or servants who remain in the smoke and can be taken out. I like how some enemies react like this. It makes the smoke bomb less overpowered? Instead of just smoke bombing a group and taking everyone down, which can feel repetitive, we now need to plan more carefully. The animations in this footage look smoother and more polished than what we've seen in earlier gameplay. For example, the flip Naoi does after throwing the smoke bomb is really polished. In earlier parkour gameplay, similar animations looked a bit rough, almost like some frames were missing, but here everything feels much more refined. Samurai also makes stealth harder in another way. They can slice through bushes while searching for us. This is such a smart idea because it means bushes aren't always a safe hiding spot anymore. They actually change the environment as they search for us, making stealth feel more challenging. Overall, samurai are enemies we really can't take lightly in this game. Once they're alerted, they're tough to fool, and simple tricks or distractions won't work. That said, if we're in trouble, smoke bombs are great for creating distance and making a quick escape. Shadows has a progression system that lets us upgrade our stealth skills and abilities. Enemies have levels based on their type and the area they're in, and if we don't improve the hidden blade, stronger enemies might completely block our assassination attempts. Here's how it works. When we approach a target, a white prompt means an instant kill, yellow means we'll hurt them but not finish them, and red means they'll block our move entirely. To deal with tougher enemies, we can use perks to increase our assassination damage or try different approaches. For example, some enemies might survive a direct attack, but can still be taken down with an air assassination. There's also a setting to enable instant kills for all assassinations, which is great for those who prefer that option. It's nice to have that choice, but samurai, being elite enemies, have extra armor, so it makes sense in the game that they're harder to defeat. Yasuke is mainly built for close-up combat, but he can still use stealth if equipped with his bow. The bow is great for taking out enemies from a distance. Also, check out the dense forest environments. They look amazing! Yasuke can even sneak behind enemies for powerful melee assassinations, allowing us to combine stealth and direct combat when needed. Shadows won't have social stealth, and this has been known for a while now. While Valhalla's social stealth wasn't particularly great, it still brought something extra to the game. So it's a bit disappointing that this shinobi-themed game is leaving it out completely. There are also a few small but interesting details worth pointing out. The cloth physics look a lot better now. We can see Naoi with her hood down, which wasn't an option in Mirage. It looks like the ability to toggle the hood up or down is back. Naoi also wears a face mask, and it looks pretty cool. Overall, Shadows seems to be adding many new features that weren't in the previous games, and I'm pretty impressed. The delay seems worth it, because we're getting features on day one that might otherwise have been added later as updates. Assassin's Creed RPGs usually don't have much depth in their stealth systems, but it's good to see more depth this time. That said, all these features won't matter much if the AI isn't good enough. I really hope the guards are smarter this time and have better detection systems. But that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.